The quest to achieve hypersonic flight that could shrink intercontinental travel times has just taken a significant step forward with the latest flight test conducted by Destinus with its Jungfrau Technology Demonstrator aircraft. The European technology startup said this test included what it believes is the first ever use of a hydrogen powered afterburner. Destinus wants to be able to achieve flights between Europe and Australia in just four hours by flying at more than five times the speed of sound. With our airplanes, we try to go extremely fast, but if you go very fast, you also want to make sure that you have the range for it. And we're trying to tap into this new market that is ultra long range transportation, because today there are no airplanes that can fly nonstop all the way from, say, New York to Sydney. So these very ultra long range transportation routes don't exist, or there's only a few airlines that are operating them. But if you do fly those airplanes, it means that you have to fly for over 16 hours. So we want to make these ultra long range routes the new normal and being able to tap into those in just four hour flights. But Destinus believes this will only be viable if it can be achieved in a zero carbon way without burning fossil fuel. And that's why the recent flight with the new hydrogen afterburners could be a breakthrough in efforts to fly at Mach 5. The company also wants the unprecedented ultra-high speed and ultra-long-range aircraft to be affordable for a much wider group of travelers than was the case with the Concorde, which was so far the only supersonic aircraft to be used in commercial service. At Destinus, we want to revolutionize the aviation industry and change the way that people see travel and how they connect with the world. We want to make it possible for people all over the world to access any place within just a matter of a few hours. And we're doing this by developing airplanes that are both fast and clean. So we're using hydrogen to, to propel the airplanes because of their high energy efficiency per mass and also because of the cleanliness. So there are no carbon emissions that are emitted when you fly with hydrogen. So we want to be able to provide these airplanes to economy class as well as to business class. Initially, we will most likely be focusing more on the business class passengers, but in the long term, we want to be able to provide uh, airplanes and seats and ticket prices that are affordable for the economy class passengers as well. As well. How we do it, we will be using hydrogen as fuel. And right now we see that the trend of hydrogen, the price is going down, while the uh, price for fossil fuels is going up. And in a few years from now, the two prices will meet. Uh, if you look at the energy, the price per energy of both of these fuels, since hydrogen has three times the amount of energy compared to uh, kerosene per mass, you can compare them in terms of energy prices and in a few years from now they will meet, which means that eventually if the trend continues, hydrogen could actually become cheaper to purchase and procure. None of this is going to be easy. The Destinus team working at different sites across Europe plans to take incremental steps, starting with flights combining its hydrogen afterburners with existing turbofans before progressing to introduce its own hydrogen-fueled, air-burning turbo-rocket engines. To date, afterburners have typically only been used with high-performance fighter jets, not with civilian aircraft, and never before using hydrogen. To make this happen, we're gonna have to revolutionize a lot of things within the technology side, as well as in the regulatory environment to, to have people think about aviation in a different kind of way because we're not just developing normal airplanes, we're developing something that is extremely complex, but also that is flying at a higher altitude than normal airplanes are today. So we need to develop a new type of propulsion system that uses hydrogen as propulsion. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna be purchasing off-the-shelf jet engines in the short term. Then we're gonna be uh, building afterburners in-house that uses liquid hydrogen as fuel, and then ramjets 
that uses liquid hydrogen as well to be able to propel us all the way to hypersonic velocities. And we're developing unmanned vehicles that have the shape of our future hypersonic vehicles so that we can test it out. And then we're putting different types of equipment, including propulsion system, the autopilot system, different components, uh, tanks, liquid hydrogen tanks, etc., up in the air inside of these vehicles so that we can do component testing while we go along. Right now, we're very, very focused on our next vehicle, our next prototype, which will be flying at supersonic speeds in 2024 with liquid hydrogen. It's currently in the manufacturing phase, and we are undergoing tests of the engine, as well as developing the afterburner that will be able to propel it to, to supersonic speeds. And the aircraft itself will be very different from anything we've seen before in the skies. The entire aero shape it needs to look very different from normal airplanes today because when you're traveling at such speeds and at such altitude, you want to have an efficient shape that can get you through the air as quickly as possible. So we are looking at a delta wing shape. It's uh, somewhat similar to the Concorde, but since the Concorde was only flying at supersonic speed, it will have some variations to that that will be able to be even more efficient at hypersonic velocities. An aircraft operating at Mach 5 speeds will need a new approach to flying, initially at least with a pilot on board, although perhaps eventually with fully autonomous operations. We're developing an autopilot system because when you're flying at hypersonic velocities, you don't want to have a pilot steering the direction of the vehicle because when you're at that fast speed, every little small change is going to have a major impact on the flight. So we will have a mission control center that is uh, already in, in advance saying what the mission will look like for this vehicle, which is very similar to what airplanes are, traditional airplanes are doing today as well. Usually pilots are only there for the takeoff and landing, and then during cruise, they, they have a cruise control that, that um, controls the flight and uh, the pilots can, can sit back and they're there for safety. So we have a similar system, idea for our system as well. But what about the elephant in the room, noise? Surely flying above the speed of sound means sonic booms, and those aren't permitted under current regulations over populated areas. So we're looking at routes that are avoiding populated areas, flying over oceans and flying over deserts. And we're mapping out these routes right now to try to see which airports can we go to and which routes can we cover. And that's why it also becomes extremely important for us to develop vehicles that can fly very, very long ranges so that we can cover these routes over unpopulated areas. Destinus believes that by the mid 2030s, it could have an aircraft capable of carrying 200 or so passengers up to around 2,300 nautical miles. As it progresses towards much longer flights at higher speeds, the destinous approach will be step by step. It's a long-term project. So that will be a smaller passenger airplane that will have less than 100 people on board and it will have limitations in terms of the range. We aim to still fly at hypersonic velocities and uh, that will be able to cut down the time by at least a third. Um, and then future, future versions of this airplane will be able to cross any location on Earth and cover these very far distances. We're talking 20,000 kilometers and a few hundred passengers on board. To fly efficiently, these aircraft will cruise at altitudes as high as 30 to 40 kilometers. And that's about three times higher than today's airliners. We will create the pressurized system so that there will not be any significant impact on the people and passengers that are inside of these airplanes. And when it comes to the, the flight itself, it's all about the acceleration. So if we do a nice steady acceleration of these airplanes, the passengers inside of the aircraft are not going to, to feel any major effect and any major G-forces. We will make sure that the, the mission profile and how we design it will be as comfortable as possible for the passengers on board. And of course, a little bit of, little bit of acceleration is always thrilling and, and fun for the passengers too. The first flight with the Destinus hydrogen afterburners, which happened at an airport near Munich in late May, could prove to be the proverbial one small step that leads to a giant leap in air transportation. This is the first 
ever flight that we make with hydrogen. So it's an incredibly important step for us because it will give us a lot of new knowledge and data and insight of how it how it works to handle hydrogen on, on board a vehicle, on board a flying vehicle. And this is a great stepping stone for us to then move over to the next vehicles that will be flying with liquid hydrogen and have even larger afterburners. So the technology inside of this, this vehicle, the afterburner that we developed in-house and tested in-house, this is something unique also for the world. This is the first time, to our knowledge, that we see a flight that has afterburner technology using hydrogen as fuel. So it's a big milestone, not just for us, but also for the entire aviation industry. And from this point, we will scale it, we will only go upwards, go faster, and uh, be able to travel even further with these prototypes and this technology. Well, at Future Flight, we're going to be tracking what the Destinus team are up to very closely indeed. The next few years are going to be critical in this exciting story, progressing towards, hopefully, hypersonic flight. So stick with us at futureflight.aero for this and much more news about the cutting edge of aviation. <laughs>